Rahim, Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa Rasulillah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear brothers and sisters, one of the controversial issues when it comes to males and females, rights and regulations, gender roles within Islam is the issue of what happens in the hereafter. And specifically, one thing that really upsets sisters, and we're going to try to explain in today's video, is the issue of Hur al -Ain, the maidens from Jannah. In a hadith narrated by Mu'adh, which is reported by Imam Ahmed, and it also reported by uh, Ibn Majah, and it is a good hadith, it's Hassan. Uh, it says, every time a woman hurts or annoys her husband in his life, a huri, a huriya, a wife from Jannah will say, do not hurt him, may Allah curse you, he is but an outsider in your house and will soon leave you for us. I understand the wording is tough. This is the best translation here, Allah, Allah knows best. But it is tough. Now, it's not about, oh, why is she cursing this and that? Because annoying your husband is a big sin and a big mistake. Now I know you can say, but my husband is this and his dad is bad and blah, blah, blah. Remember, the standard of what is a good man is the Sahaba. Were the Sahabas perfect? Radiallahu anhum wa They were not perfect, but they were good. They had issues, family issues. Men were annoyed, women were annoyed. They, they had divorce, they had problems. Because sometimes the sisters want to say, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll believe this hadith or I will apply this hadith or I will submit to my husband when he's going to be like this and like this and like this, give you a hundred things that they want him to be like, which are impossible. No, the, the concept of, for example, fairness and justice, when we talk about polygyny, right? A lot of women will say, well, I'll never accept this and tear because you cannot be fair and just. But see, the definitions of these terms of what the hadith say are done by the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and the seerah and sahaba and so on. All right, we have to understand that those are the ones who define these terms. So we cannot put our own definitions. That's why Islam is called submission. The faster we submit and understand and accept these things, the faster we can live, I would argue, better lives. Till then, we're going to always have it in the back of the mind. Why this? Why this hadith says this? I don't believe it's authentic. Then you start denying slowly, slowly, many things, including sometimes ayat from the Quran. And sadly, people can be led astray. So let us understand this issue of Hur al -Ain. And what is it? Why do men get it? Do women get it? What do the scholars say? Who are they? Who are they not? And what is the importance? First and foremost, what we understand here is the psychology of the man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demarcates here the psychology of the man and the woman. The man is here the psychology of the man and the woman. The man is more open about his sexuality, about his desire, his attraction towards the opposite gender, while the female is a bit more withdrawn. Now, of course, 21st century could be the opposite. SubhanAllah, things have changed. Fitra is corrupted in many, many women and many men. All right? But naturally, when we look at the Quran, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses things, men are a bit more foregoing with regards to their desires, their, uh, their sexuality. Women, it doesn't mean they don't have it inside of them. They do, but they're not so forthcoming. They're not so talkative about these things. All right? That's the first thing that we learn. Second thing that we want to learn is that the situation of the leaving women in paradise in Jannah is better than the situation of her life. Okay? She'll be higher in status and more beautiful. You have to understand that. There are several hadith reports that are narrated concerning this, but basically... Um, None of them can be proven to be fully sound. But if a righteous woman from among the people of this world enters paradise, she will be rewarded for her righteous deeds. And basically, the scholars have said that she is basically um, more a higher level than the whores, okay, of paradise, right? That's exactly what, for example, Sheikh Uthameen says in his fatawa. So let's go now. Why um, the why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the question comes, why doesn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mention for women, for example, that they would have something like that? Some scholars said that this is not for women. It's only for men. All right? However, some scholars have said that Allah will not describe these things because women by nature are shy. So it's not like, you know, would, wouldn't fit to talk about these things for women. All right? But Allah then the, the scholars give the evidence of 
um, of, of some of the ayat of the Quran. For example, Surah Al-Fusila, verse 31 to 32. Therein you shall have all that your inner self desire. Right? So, again, Allah knows best, but throughout the Quran and Sunnah, it is very clear that the Hur al are women, maidens of Jannah for men. What's the point for having these? Well, men have to fight their sexual urges much more. They're always outside. There's a lot of fitna. And their reward, Allah is uh, giving them the glad tidings of the reward in paradise of the most beautiful women. If you think in this life you had there were beautiful women around, Allah gives you the glad tidings of more beautiful women in paradise without flaws that the women of this world would have. Also a man might have had a very hard time with his wife and the women of this world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding him in the day of judgment in paradise with a woman who's not going to Allah is rewarding him in the day of judgment in paradise with a woman who's not going to cause him trouble. I know, again, disclaimer, some women would say, man, you know, here we go again. It's always about men, always about men. I'm just reading what the hadith say. I'm just telling you what the scholars have said and what the ayat are saying. Don't get angry at me. I'm trying to help sisters understand Islam is submission. These ayat and these hadith are basically about this subject. So I'm not making it up, all right? So I've quoted Surah Fusilat and I've quoted the hadith of Imam Ahmed and the hadith mentioned Ibn Majah. So the description of Hur al -Ain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them and says that there will be fair females with wide, lovely eyes. Okay, and these descriptions are very, very physical in the Quran. All right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them like unto preserved pearls. Surah Al Waqiyah, verse 22 and 23. And the Mufassirin have discussed on this. These are the ayat of the Quran that you are reading, these are the Mufassirin and the scholars that you respect. I'm just quoting what they are saying to help you understand a bit the issue. All right. So, and of course, keep it in mind that um, with regards to women, what would women have? It's always like that. I mean, in paradise, you're not going to have the same mindset as now, the jealous mindset. Even if you have just one husband, which most in general scholars say that the woman is not going to have other extra men. She's going to have her husband. And I know some of my clients say, I tell me that that's not true <laughs> because I don't want him. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you, know, and guide. But it's not in line with the fitrah anyway, right? Women are, don't have more than one husband in this world. And in this life, men have more than one woman in halal. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them in paradise. Well, bottom line is your heart will be satisfied, sister. So you don't have to worry. But we're just trying to understand so that the doubts don't creep into your heart and your mind in this dunya, which can cause problems of faith, iman. So, As-Sa'adi, rahimahullah, says, and these will have wide, lovely eyes. Al-Hawra is a woman whose eyes are lined with kuhl, beautiful and bright. Al-Ain refers to the beautiful and huge eyes. Okay, and the females, um, the eyes of the females are, they say, one of the most beautiful signs. They're like preserved pearls. They're pure, shining, covered, protected from people's eyes. Okay, from the wind and the sun. These are some of the commentary. In Tafsir of Sa'adi, page 991. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says, Rahman, verse 58, in beauty they are like rubies and coral. Beautiful, right? Beautiful women. Again, the description is very, very detailed. Right? Why? For men to be stimulated to look forward to that.